G'day everyone, and in this video we're going to be going over the evolution of every AFL team's VFL slash AFL logo. Enjoy guys. The Crows first adopted a shield design as their first logo when they entered the competition in 1991. In 1997 they made a subtle change by making the Adelaide text more prominent than Crows, and this was done in response to Port Adelaide joining the AFL. In 1999, they then let go of the shield design and instead only went with the crow they used previously with the bold text below the crow rather than above. Then they arguably had their biggest logo change in 2010 to a more modernized version of the crow and it is still in use today. For Brisbane, their first logo was in 1997 and they adopted a merged logo with elements of both the former Fitzroy and Brisbane Bears logo. The lines were the last side alongside the kangaroos to scrap the shield design and they did this in 2002 by adopting an oval design which sees the the text be more dominant than anything else. But just like the Crows, they changed their logo again in 2010 to a different line design, and I reckon it looks much more fierce and menacing than the other line used in their previous logo. Now for Carlton, the Carlton first official logo, just like all other VFL sides, it was used way back in 1976 and featured their iconic club monogram in a shield design. They then saw very minor changes within 1980 to 1996, such as the replacement of navy blue to their original rule blue colour as well as the placement of the VFL AFL logo. But then in 1997 they dropped the shield and featured their monogram outlined in a laurel wreath. After adopting that logo for 9 years, in 2006 they changed their design again, this time dropping the laurel wreath and instead using a more rounded version of their monogram. They then simplified it again in 2011 by only using the monogram before returning to the laurel wreath again in 2015 with the logo being slightly modernised to the one they used between 1997 and 2005. In 2020 they decided to simplify it again by using their current monogram without anything in the back. Between 1976 and 1992 Collingwood essentially used the same logo which saw a magpie standing on a fence within a shield with only very minor changes seen within the time. But then in 1993 they completely changed the design, originally only meant to be a centenary logo, saw the magpie in an oval shaped shield with the Collingwood and Australian flags. But after not complying with government standards, they were then forced to change their logo in 2004 to place the Australian flag on the left. And after using the same design for over 25 years, Collingwood again simplified their logo in 2018, removing the flags and making the magpie much more dominant. Similar to many other Victorian teams, Essendon's first logo came in 1976, and the same plain shield design behind the red and black sash was used until 1996, with only minor changes seen. In 1997, they then adopted their current logo, which became the second longest serving current logo to date. However, in 2022, as part of their 150th year anniversary, and in order to pay tribute to the club's history, they adopted a heritage logo featuring their club emblem. Now, I'm not too sure if this logo is going to stay beyond 2022, if they're going to go for a new one, or they're going to revert back to the one they used back in 1997. Now, next up, we've got Fremantle, and the first team so far not to have used a shield design, and in 1995, they adopted their first logo, which featured a man holding an anchor. They then changed that design in 1997 to make the Fremantle text more dominant than Dockers as that was owned by a clothing company. After 14 more years they then changed their logo again in 2011 to a much more simplistic design which features purple a lot more, dropping the green and red which is what the Dockers still use today. Geelong's original 1976 logo featured a cat scratching its back in a shield design with a subtle change between 1980 to 1982. In 1983, they changed their cat logo and used a much fiercer version of the cat and used that design for the next 16 years until 1999 with only the subtle changes to the VFL AFL logo placement. In 2000, they went for a major change, dropping both the cat and the shield and replaced it with a GFC monogram. They then returned back to using the cat in 2008 and it's still the logo they use today. For Gold Coast, in 2011, they had their first logo featuring the GC emblem as well as the sunbeams, but in 2019, they got rid of the sunbeams and making the logo more simplistic. Now, just like the Gold Coast Suns, the Giants haven't really gone through many changes as they have only been in the competition since 2012. They've only ever had the one logo in which they have used since 2012, which features a large G and Giants text underneath the logo. It is one of only two logos to only feature one colour. Between 1976 and 1982, Hawthorne used a Flying Hawk shield design as their first ever logo. Similarly to Geelong, they changed the design in 1983 to only feature the hawk head and replacing the gold text into brown. 
it was used until 1996 with only a few subtle changes. In 1997, they replaced the shield with a box and used a completely different Hawk, and this was in use until 2007. In 2008, the Hawk design was then changed again and is now currently used as their logo for the last 13 years. From 1976 to 1988, Melbourne included a demon as part of their logo, and since they used to use Royal Blue back in the day, they didn't have to change the border of the shield. However, a much more simplistic design was then used in 1989, which featured a demon script on a jumper design. In 1995, the demon face was then reintroduced with a different design within a navy blue box, and between 2005 to 2007, they got rid of the navy blue box and added Melbourne FC diagonally below. For the 150th anniversary, they then changed their logo in 2008 to their jumper design in a square, but that was shortly lived, probably due to its simplicity and it looking pretty shit to be honest. In 2011 it was again changed and featured a lot more details such as their club monogram, pitchfork and a footy, but then again changed in 2016 to only feature the monogram as well as the Melbourne text and has been in use ever since. North Melbourne's first logo was a shield design and adopted the bouncing kangaroo facing left between 1976 to 1982. However, from 1983 to 2001, they flipped the kangaroo to make it face right with only a few changes added, including the color of the stripes and the placement of the new AFL logo. They finally dropped the shield in 2002, being one of the last clubs to do so and decided to add some more stripes. And in 2007, a a totally different kangaroo design was adopted and was in use for 10 years until another change in 2017. A much more aggressive kangaroo was adopted in 2017 and more prominence was put on the words North rather than kangaroos. Port Adelaide's inaugural logo featured the iconic hand holding the power bolt and lasted for a few years from 1997 to 2000. A minor change was then added in 2001 to extend the bolt and to drop the port reference. After 19 years of use, Port Adelaide then changed their logo in 2020 to a much more simplistic version, featuring the prison bars and the monogram. In 1976, the Tigers adopted a shield logo featuring a prancing tiger and decided to continue using the royal blue border until 1988, even though it wasn't part of their club colours. In 1989, they then changed the tiger design to one much more closer to frame, as well as adopting a yellow border rather than blue. A major change was then adopted in 1995, which saw a rounded version of the tiger with the text Richmond and Tiger featured top and bottom. This logo lasted 17 years until 2011 with only a very minor outline change being added in 2001. In 2012 they then simplified the logo again and in my opinion really improved the design of the Tiger making it seem much more fierce and aggressive and has been in use ever since. St Kilda's first logo design saw a stick figure with a halo within a shield behind the club's colours and lasted from 1976 to 1988 with only a few minor changes to the outline colour. The design was then changed in 1989 to a stick man taking a mark with the two goalposts featured outer side of the shield. However, in 1995, St Kilda simplified their logo to their iconic crest design, which in fact has been in use way before 1995, dating back to 1933, in which it appeared first on their jumpers. The logo is still in use today and is the longest currently serving logo in the AFL. Sydney were known as South Melbourne in 1976 and the logo featured a swan behind the iconic V design within the retro shield. In 1982 when they relocated to Sydney, they changed their logo by incorporating the Sydney Harbour Bridge as well as also adding Sydney to the text. In 1992 they then replaced the Harbour Bridge design and incorporated the Sydney Hopper House instead. A major logo change was then seen in 1997 where the swan said goodbye to the shield and incorporated a swan and opera house into the Heritage V. This logo was in use for 23 years until in 2021 they removed the opera house and made the swan significantly larger and is now the current logo that they use in the AFL. West Coast's first logo design in 1987 saw them using the iconic VFL shield and featured the historic eagle retro design and only saw minor changes until the shield was completely dropped between 1997 to 1999. In 2000, the Eagles completely changed the design by adopting a full wings version of the Eagle which seemed to be in a flying motion. Whilst it being a very wide logo, it surprisingly lasted 18 seasons until finally in 2018, a part of West Coast rebrand, they decided to change their logo to a more modernised and simpler version in which they saw them win the flag that very year with a new logo. The last team we have obviously is the Western Bulldogs and the Bulldogs first logo design, just like all the other VFL clubs, was back in 1976 and it featured a standing bulldog within a shield and lasted 12 years. 
It was then changed again in 1989 and featured a more stylized Bulldog with a jumper design as a background and it lasted until 1994 with only minor changes such as the VFL logo and the font used. Again in 1995, it was then changed to a different Bulldog design below the text displaying Footscray Bulldogs. This was changed in 1997 when the Footscray Bulldogs then became the Western Bulldogs but only lasted a couple years. In 1999, the logo was now an oval shape and featured the same Bulldog design corresponding to their jumper. This was the longest serving logo in Bulldogs history until it was changed again in 2015 to a more traditional Bulldog design in front of a modernized shield. This is arguably one of the best logo designs of all time as the Bulldog is now much bolder and angrier and fiercer. Anyways guys, thanks for watching the video. I thought this would be a, quite an interesting intake of all the AFL VFL logos in history. Subscribe if you're new for more AFL content and if you want to see more videos similar to this over the off season, let me know if you've got any ideas in particular. Anyways, cheers for watching guys. We'll see you soon in my next one.